welcome Yay. to today's episode of the Daily Blend. I am your host, AC, and in studio with us today is Quinn Gresham. And Quinn is the producing artistic director at the Arrow Rock Lyceum Theater. How are you, Quinn? I'm so great, AC. Thank you so much for having absolutely, me. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us what is going on at Arrow Rock. I know there's lots. There's always a lot, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the great things about it. You know, it, 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 it's wild. In 1960, somebody thought a town with no one living in it <laughs> would be the perfect place for a theater. It's perfect. And here we are. It's been 63 seasons, uh, wow. and uh, we are embarking on a new one opening up on June 6th. Seventh. Wow. Yeah. We're uh, we're excited to open the season with uh, a Lyceum premiere of one of the biggest musicals that exists in terms of scenery, in terms of actors. It's just really, really big. So in 1980, 42nd Street appeared on Broadway mm -hmm. based on the 1933 movie. Somebody will fact check me and make sure this yeah, is right. Yeah, they will. <laughs> I think it was a 33 movie based on a 32 novel. Okay. Uh, so the story's been around for a while, but uh, it, it, it really actually is one of the very first jukebox musicals uh, featuring a lot of songs from the time period. It's one of the great showbiz fables about mm. uh, Peggy Sawyer who gets off the train from Allentown, PA and uh, tries to get a job in a new Broadway show. And uh, all sorts of excitement ensues beyond that, but uh, in, in, the, the show contains so many great songs. Lullaby of Broadway, 42nd Street, of mm -hmm. course, We're in the Money. Yeah. Just great tunes. And after each one of the tunes, you think, well, that can't be, there can't be anything bigger than that. And then the next song happens. And then the next song happens. If you love tap dancing, it is the greatest show of all time. Oh. We just have a, a, a tremendous, tremendous team leading it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Benton, who actually appeared in the Broadway revival of 42nd Street, is directing it for us. Uh, he brings a tremendous amount of uh, knowledge uh, uh, in, in how to pull off that incredible show. So after that, we have uh, Escape to Margaritaville, oh. uh, which is uh, a, a jukebox musical uh, capitalizing on the catalog of Jimmy Buffett, the late, oh. great Jimmy Buffett. Oh. So songs like Margaritaville, yeah. obviously. Um, it's Five O'Clock Somewhere. Five O'Clock Somewhere. Fins, uh, Cheeseburger in Paradise, mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs. Uh, Why Don't We Get Drunk and Fill in the Blank. I'm not going to yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all of those songs are wrapped up in a great, romantic, hilarious story set on a uh, Caribbean island in a somewhat past its prime resort. Just a great, great show. Gosh, that sounds fun. It's it's going to be the beach party of the summer. Okay. We're really looking forward to it. Okay. Uh, and ticket sales have been extraordinary for it, so I, you know. Yeah, because it sounds fun to everybody. Get a like ticket it does now. Yeah, well, I hope you'll come. I feel like I need to get a ticket as soon as we're done. Great, great. Okay. Um, after that, we have uh, the Lyceum premiere of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm. Uh, that great story about Charlie Bucket uh, mm -hmm. finding the golden ticket golden inside ticket. of his candy bar. Uh, and this is, uh, this is such a great show. Mm. Uh, great music. Of course, it, it uses a lot of the, the music from the 1971 film, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate yes. Factory with Gene Wilder. Uh, Pure Imagination, yes. I've Got the Golden Ticket, uh, uh, The Candy Man. Mm -hmm. um, just great, great music. But it's such a fantastic story about a kid who seemingly has nothing, seemingly has no prospects. Mm. And and what does he do? He capitalizes on the power of his own imagination yes. uh, to, to really... Uh, rise up, and I won't spoil what happens, okay. but uh, it, it is just a terrific show with a great cast. Mm. Uh, after that, I, I, people always ask, uh, what is your favorite show? Yes. And I never have a great answer to it, except this one. Okay. Um, so the fourth show of our season is Noises Off, uh, which you may not have heard of. No. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it takes place uh, on the final, well, the, the first act is the final rehearsal of a play called Nothing On, a sex farce. And during the rehearsal, you learn that everything is going wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the night before the show opens. People don't know their lines. The props are in the wrong place. Ugh. The doors don't work. I mean, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. Something those of us in the industry have all experienced. Of course. Uh, in Act Two, the entire set spins around, and you watch the show from backstage. Oh. Uh, and really see everything going wrong. And then in the third act, it spins back around again, and you see a, a performance late in the run where everything has completely devolved into chaos. Mm. Such a great show. Uh, after that, we have Moriarty, uh, which is a Sherlock Holmes adventure Okay. Uh, for Sherlock nerds like myself out there. It's the Reichenbach, uh, Reichenbach Falls story. Uh, what makes it really exciting is that in addition to being a great mystery, mm -hmm. uh, 
five actors play the entire cast of characters. Okay. And there are a lot of characters. Wow. Uh, and it's been adapted by one of our great comedic playwrights. So in addition to being a great mystery, a it's quick changing funny. tour de force, it's also hilarious. Yes. Uh, and then we'll round out our summer season with a Million Dollar Quartet, mm -hmm. which capitalizes on the actual true seminal event in rock and roll history where Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, Jerry oh. Lee Lewis, and Elvis all gathered in Sun Studios. Mm -hmm. Every song that any of those guys uh, might be famous for, you hear it's it in, there. in the show. Oh. So it's a great concert, great story. Uh, and then we'll take a little break and we'll come back with our annual production of A Christmas Carol. Absolutely. It's going to be the 10th annual production of it. So we have some very exciting plans uh, to take what is already a terrific show yes. and make it even more exciting for this auspicious anniversary. I love the word auspicious. I do too. I'm I not do. sure what it means, but I, I like I to either, use but it. I really like yeah. to hear it. I like to use it. I love the word <laughs> auspicious. I do. And you know what I love a lot about you guys? You know, you're taking local talent and creating these amazing productions. Yeah. I have seen so many of my neighbor's kids, yep. you know, starring in this and at Arrow Rock. I think it's amazing that these kids, especially, yep. you know, in these communities, these local and surrounding communities are getting the opportunity to perform such classic, classic plays it, and performances. It's one of the things that I'm most proud of, especially with the young people from the area that we're able to include in our shows, working yes. alongside Broadway veterans. Yes. Uh, they, they, they really do grow from that experience. Uh, and often, flash forward, you know, 10, 15 years later, yeah. you'll find them on Broadway. I'm sure. I mean, it, it's happening currently right now. Uh, so that is something we're very proud of. That is amazing. I love what you do. Your energy is Completely contagious. Well, bless you. Yours is too. Love it. Oh, so we make a good duo. Could we duo. just talk for another 20, 30 you know, minutes? we make a great duo. I agree. We do. <laughs> Quinn, thank you so much for coming in to talk to us about the season at Arrow Rock. And I'm sure everybody is now logging on to get their tickets. I hope they are at lyceumtheater.org. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Quinn. you.